Welcome to At Home with AJ. I'm glad that you could welcome the Kingsville Public Library into your home today, and thanks for joining me in mine. Today, we are going to be making some bread. I have a fabulous recipe that uh, I've had for a really long time. Uh, it's one that uh, my great-grandmother uh, had passed down. I actually have been making this bread since I was about four years old, and I'm going to share it with you today. So if you have been to the grocery store and you've gone to the bread shelf and there's no bread, uh, no need to panic. I'm going to show you how to make your very own bread and then you won't want to go to the store and buy bread off the shelf. So uh, I really like this recipe. It's very versatile. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something else you can do with this basic bread recipe today. There's actually a lot you can do with it. Uh, it's very simple. It's an easy technique and... Um, like I said, once once you uh, make some homemade bread, you're not going to want to buy that store-bought stuff. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need is you will need some yeast. Okay, um, Packaged yeast is fine. You can buy it in the jars is great. I actually buy mine in a big block bag from GFS because yeast stores in the freezer very nicely. So if you have an opportunity to get a larger amount, uh, you can store that in the freezer and it keeps well. Uh, so you'll need yeast, you will need some sugar, you will need some salt, some margarine, a couple of eggs, some flour, and some warm water. And remember, you'll be able to find the entire recipe in the comments below this video. So the first thing that you're going to do, there's a couple different ways you can do this, um, is you're going to combine your yeast and your warm water. And you want to make sure that your water is warm. I believe the instructions on the side of the yeast say that uh, it should be 115 degrees. Um, and, and you can measure it if you'd like to. Um, but uh, warm water, you don't want your water to be too hot because if it's too hot, it will scald the yeast. And if it's too cold, it won't allow the yeast to activate. So we're just going to put our yeast right into our flour, and then we're going to add our water. And uh, I know the package a lot of times will say dissolve your yeast in the water. If you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, I just feel like it's an extra step, and sometimes it gets a little bit real difficult. And a lot of times I will use a bread machine for the first stage of my bread. I will just throw everything in my bread machine, put it on the dough cycle, and let it do the work, and then I do the second half. Um, and I realized when I was putting my stuff into the bread machine, well, they're not dissolving the yeast first and all that, so why do I need to? And you really don't need to. It's just an extra step. If you would like to, if you feel better about it, by all means, go ahead. But it's not going to hurt if you just put your yeast into your flour and add your water. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm grabbing your tubs up. So I'm just going to pour my water right into here. And we'll just stir that around until it gets good and combined. And the order of the ingredients is kind of important. Um, whether you put it into uh, the dough cycle of your bread machine or whether you're going to mix it right here in this bowl is that you're going to want to make sure that your water and yeast get pretty well mixed with your flour before you add your sugar or your salt. And the reason for that is because your sugar, if it gets with the yeast too quickly, the sugar is the energy that helps the yeast to activate and make the bread dough rise. And if that sugar gets to that yeast too quickly, um, it will rise too quickly. And so, so you'll have a really sticky dough um, and, your, and your bread will just come out really like funky and chewy. It's just, it's really hard to work with. Um, and you won't want to add your salt directly to your yeast because the salt can actually kind of burn the yeast. So you'll, you'll want to make sure that you don't add those directly together. Um, and the other thing that I will say about salt, I don't know if I said it in any of the other recipes, is that salt's very important. And I know there's a lot out there about eliminating salt from your diet, and, and that's an important element, and that's why it's great to make things at home because you can, you can control the amount of 
you know, stuff that goes goes into your recipe so you can control how much salt, how much sugar goes into a particular recipe. Um, with salt, you actually, any time that you are baking, um, you need salt as an important element uh, to make that chemical reaction happen. So um, you, need, you need the salt in there um, to, to make sure that that dough is, is uh, going to rise and work together. So we've got that pretty well mixed up, and if you can see that, we've got kind of going on there. So now we're just going to add our sugar, our salt, our eggs, and our margarine. And we're just going gonna to kind of cut that margarine up before we get it too much in there. You could use a fork and, and that helps it as well. And we're just going to work this dough around until everything gets nice and combined. So once you get your bread dough pretty well combined, you're going to want to flour a surface. And we're just going to bring that bread dough out. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on top. And we're just going to sort of fold that dough over onto itself again and again and what we're doing here in this kneading process is just working those air pockets out of the dough so we're gonna just keep doing that until we get a nice smooth consistency just work that and you'll want to make sure that you don't add too much flour at this time because if you get too much flour on your bread dough, it ends up being tough and, and chewy and you don't want that. And once you have your dough ball, you feel like it's pretty smooth and pretty well mixed, we're just going to put it into a grease bowl, cover it with a towel, and set it in a warm place for about 45 minutes to let it rise. So our dough has been rising for about 45 minutes a little longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dust my hands with flour because sometimes the dough can be a little sticky and you'll notice that it's a nice smooth consistency. You'll want to turn that onto your floured surface and you can really feel kind of the puffiness, the airiness in that dough. We're just going to again fold it over top of itself, working those air pockets out of there. Um, it's very important that you do that because if you don't, what happens is uh, you'll get air pockets inside your bread dough when it bakes, so you'll cut it open um, and, and there'll be big huge holes inside of there and you don't want that. Again, keep your flour to a minimum so that you're not making a tough or chewy, too chewy a bread dough. And then once we feel like we have worked those air pockets out of that, turning itself over onto itself several times, we're going to shape it into kind of our loaf and from there we will put it into a greased 
bread pan and be ready to go. Once you have your loaf kind of shaped, and it doesn't matter if you get it perfect because when the bread does its second rising, it will fill in that pan and it will turn out fabulously anyway. So we have it in our greased bread pan. We're going to, again, cover it with a towel, put it back into our warm place for about 45 minutes till it's about double in size, and then it'll be ready to go into the oven. So again, I mentioned that this is a very versatile dough. You can do a lot with it. If you didn't want to make a loaf of bread, you can use your dough cutter to cut pieces of dough, roll them into a nice ball, place them in a greased baking dish a little bit apart so they have room to rise and double in size, and you'll have some nice rolls. Uh, you can sprinkle some nuts in there once it's rose and doubled in size. Before you put it in the oven, you even dump a little butter and a little sugar on there and you have some fabulous cinnamon rolls. If you leave them plain, you've got some nice dinner rolls. Uh, you can actually put these individually onto a cookie sheet and you'll have some nice dinner rolls ready to go. So once we get these cut, we'll put them over into our warm place to rise. Make sure that anytime that you put dough to rise, that you put it in a safe place where uh, animals or children cannot get to it. Um, you know, eating uncooked bread dough when it's rising can open up a world of problems for you. And also when you're heating things on the oven, if you're using this as your warm area, make sure that you're not too close to the back of your vent of your oven if you have your oven on, which is kind of what I do. I usually turn my oven on. A lot of times I'll, I'll prop it open and vent it a little bit get things heated up. If you're directly under the vent, um, the heat is uneven and almost too intense and it will start to bake your dough before it's ready to be baked and you don't want to do that. So now that our bread dough is about doubled in size, it has risen quite nicely, we're going to brush it. You have a couple different options here. This is an egg wash, which is just a beaten egg with a little bit of water added. I'm going to brush that right over the top. You can also use a little bit of olive oil, or you could use some butter or some butter spray. Um, I do like the egg wash because not only does it give it a pretty little gloss to it, but it also kind of helps to make that crust just a little extra crunchy. And because I've got a couple other breads that I'm doing today, I don't feel like I'm wasting a whole egg by doing an egg wash. Um, so we've brushed that quite nicely. We're going to put this into our 400 degree oven for about 30 or so minutes until it's nice and golden brown on the top and on the sides. And um, that's one of the reasons I do like to use a glass pan when I'm baking um, bread dough. Or working with bread dough because you can actually kind of also be able to gauge the sides as well. So it's just a, a nice extra bonus. If you don't have a glass pan, that's okay. Um, again, you're just going to want to wait until that top is nice and toasty brown and crispy. So we're going to put this in the oven now. So as you can see, our bread is now done. It's got a nice crusty shiny glaze on the top. You want to let it cool in the bread pan for about 5 to 15 minutes. Then you can transfer it to a cutting board and let it cool completely or almost completely because nothing beats warm bread. Get out your butter and enjoy. Thanks for welcoming the Kingsville Public Library into your home today and for joining me in mine. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, or share so that your friends can become our friends. And if you try this recipe, please make sure that you post a picture in the comment section. And we'd love to hear your feedback. You can email us, reference, at kingsvillelibrary.org. Stay safe, stay well, practice that good social distancing, and we'll see you real soon.